Okay, we are going to factor quadratic expressions. So factoring is just undoing the FOIL process. And if you remember FOIL, that is our first, outer, inner, last. So if we do first, that is going to be x times x, which is x squared. Then we have outer, so we have x times 5, so that's plus 5x. Then we have inner, so we have 4 times x, so plus 4x. And our last, 4 times 5, which is plus 20. So then we can combine our like terms. And we are left with x squared plus 5x plus 4x is 9x plus 20. So if we were to FOIL this, that is what we would get. So if we are going to factor ax squared plus bx plus c, the first thing we are going to do is factor out the greatest common factor if there is one. So that is the first thing you're going to look for. So looking at x squared plus 9x plus 20, is there a greatest common factor in this expression? No, there is not. The greatest common factor would be 1, but... So, the greatest common factor, there is none. So that is our first step. We are going to look for the greatest common factor, and if there is one, we are going to factor it out. Okay, so the second thing, we are going to list the factors of A times C. So we're going to take A times C. Our A is X squared, and our C is 20. So if we multiply those, that would be 20x squared. And we want to list the factor of factors of those. So we're going to make our little t-chart. And we're going to list as many things as we can that are going to multiply to give us 20x squared. So we can multiply 5x and 4x. 5x times 4x is 20x squared. So we can multiply 10x and 2x. 10x times 2x is 20x squared. We can multiply x and 20x. x times 20x is 20x squared. But we want the one that has a sum of b. If 9x is our b, which one of these would have a sum, if we added them together, would be 9x? Well, if we look at x, plus 20x, that would be 21x, and that's not 9x. We have 10x plus 2x, that would be 12x, that's not 9x. What about 5x plus 4x? That is 9x. So, down here, it says that we are going to rewrite bx as the sum of the factors, meaning we're going to rewrite this using the sum. So we're going to rewrite it as x squared, and instead of 9x, we're going to have the sum. So we're going to have 5x plus 4x. So we have plus 5x plus 4x, and then we still have plus 20. So all we did was replace this. So we found 2 that multiplied together to equal our a times c, and that added together to equal our b. So now, looking at these two, we are going to group them. If we group these, what is the GCF of x squared and 5x? Well, the GCF would just be x. You can take an x out of both of these two. So looking at the next set, what would the GCF be for 4x and 20? Well, 20 doesn't have an x, so we can't take out an x but we can take out a 4. So we can take out a 4 out of both of those. So it says find a common factor for the first two terms and the last two terms, which is what we did. The first two terms we found a common factor to be x. The last two terms we found our common factor to be 4. So now we're going to rewrite it using the distributive property. So we're going to take our x, which is what we factored out, 
And if we factor out an x out of x squared, we are just left with x. Because x times x is x squared. If we took an x out of 5x, we are left with 5. So you can check it. If you take x times x, that's x squared, plus x times 5 is 5x, plus our GCF, the last two terms was 4. So plus 4 times, if we take a 4 out of 4x, we are left with x, plus if we, could, if we take a 4 out of 20, we're left with 5. And as you can see, these two are the same, which is what we want. So now we can rewrite these. So if we have x plus 4 and we have x plus 5, which are the same, we can take x plus 5 and keep that the same and we have times, we have x plus 4. So that is where we rewrote it. So all we did was group them together. So our last step is we can check our answer by foiling. So let us check our answer right here. So if we were to foil, we're going to take the first times the first, so x times x, which is x squared, plus the outside, so x times 4, is 4x, plus the inner, 5 times x, so plus 5x, times the last, which is 5 times 4, so we get plus 20. So if we combine our like terms, should be 4x and 5x. We are left with x squared. 4x plus 5x is 9x. And we still have plus 20. And is that what we started with up here? Yes, it is. So that is how you know you are correct. So now you're going to need a piece of scratch paper and we're going to do some examples together. Alright, so our first example. We have 2y squared plus y minus 3. So our first thing we have to look for, do we have a GCF? No, we do not. We do not have anything that goes into all three of these. These two have a y, this doesn't. Three, two, no. So no, we do not have a greatest common factor. All right, so now we're gonna use the AC method, which means we're gonna take our A and multiply it by our C. So if we have two y squared times negative three, would be negative 6y squared. Alright, so now we have to make our little t table. And we want two things that are going to multiply together to get us negative 6y squared. So, we know that 1 is going to be positive and 1 is going to be negative. Because we know that a positive times a negative is going to give us a negative. The other thing we know, we want it to add to positive y, which is right here. We want it to equal, we need to be able to add it up to give us our b, which is 1y. So let's make our list. Two things that multiply together to equal negative 6y squared. We can have 3y and negative 2y. 3y times negative 2y is negative 6y squared. We can have negative 3y and positive 2y. Negative 3y times 2y is negative 6y squared. We can have y times negative 6y. And we can also have negative y times positive 6y. Okay, so all of those multiply together to equal negative 6y squared. 
but we want them to add up to positive y. So looking at these, if we were to add these together, which one of these would add up to a positive y? I hope you can see that 3y and negative 2y. So if you take 3y plus negative 2y is going to give you a positive y. So now we are going to rewrite those. So we still have 2y squared. And instead of y, we are going to write our factors. So we're going to have plus 3y. Then we have minus 2y. And then we have minus 3. So all we did was replace y with these two. So now let's group them and find our GCF. So if we were to group these two and these two, what is the GCF of 2y squared and 3y? Well, the most you can take out of those is a y. Okay, what is the GCF of negative 2y and negative 3? Well, the most we can take out of that is a negative 1. So, if we were to rewrite this, we're going to take our what we took out, which is y, times, if we took out a y out of 2y squared, we're going to be left with 2y, plus, if we take a y out of 3y, we're going to be left with 3. Then we took out a negative 1, so we have minus 1 times, if we take a negative 1 out of negative 2y, we are left with positive 2y. And if we take a negative 1 out of negative 3, we are left with positive 3. As you can see, our insides match, which is a good thing. And we are left with those on the outside. So let's go ahead and combine them. So we have y minus 1 times what is on the inside. So 2y plus 3. And let's check by FOIL. I would recommend doing this every time to make sure you are correct. So if we have our first y times 2y, we get 2y squared. Our outside y times 3 plus 3y. Inside, negative 1 times 2y minus 2y, negative 1 times 3 is minus 3. So if we combine our like terms, we get 2y squared. You take a 3y minus 2y, and we get plus y. We're left with minus 3. Does that match what we started with? Yes, it does. So this would be your final answer. All right. So we have 4x squared minus 22x plus 10. So the first thing we're going to check for is our GCF. What can we take out of all three of these? Well, they're all even, so we can take a 2 out of those. So our GCF would be 2. So if we have a GCF, then we are going to rewrite it first. So we're going to put our GCF on the outside. So that is what we took out. So if we take a 2 out of 4x squared, we'll be left with 2x squared. If we take a 2 out of negative 22x, we're left with negative 11x. And if we take 2 out of 10, we're left with 5. Alright, so now we're going to go back to what we were doing. We're going to take a times c. So our a is 2x squared times our c, which is 5. So 2x squared times 5 would be 10x squared. 
So now we're going to make our T-chart. And we know that we want two things multiplied together to equal positive 10x. But we want them to add to negative 11x. So we need them to add to negative 11x. So if we are going to multiply two things together to equal a positive number, we know that we either have to have two positive things multiplied together, or we know that a negative times a negative is going to be a positive. But if we want them to add to a negative number, we know that they are both negative numbers. So, if we want them to multiply to 10x squared, we can have negative 2x and negative 5x. So negative 2x times negative 5x is going to be 10x squared. And we can have negative 10x and negative x. Negative 10x times negative x is 10x squared. So which one of these adds to negative 11x? Well, I hope you know that negative 10x plus negative x is negative 11x. So now that we know that, we are going to rewrite this piece right here. So we still have our 2 on the outside. And we have 2x squared. And I am going to write the x first because I want them to be able to go into each other. 5 goes into 10. So instead of negative 11x, I'm going to write negative x. Then we have negative 10x. We're left with plus 5. Alright, so let's group them and find our GCF. So if we group these two together, what is our GCF of 2x squared and x? Well, the most we can take out of that is an x. So if we group these two, Our GCF, what is the most we can take out of negative 10 and 5? Well, we can take out a negative 5. To make this a positive. So let's rewrite this. So we have 2 on the outside times... Our GCF, we took out an x, so we're left with x times, if we take an x out of 2x squared, we're just left with 2x minus, if we take an x out of x, all we're left with is 1. So then we have minus, we took a 5 out, we took a negative 5 out, so we have minus 5. If we take negative 5 out of negative 10x, we're left with 2x. And if we take a negative 5 out of positive 5, we're left with negative 1. So when we combine these, we're going to have our outside terms. And we're going to keep these. So if we were to rewrite this, we're going to still have 2 on the outside. We bring this all the way down. It stays with us. And then we have our inside piece. I'm not going to write the bracket. Let's do 2 on the outside. Our inside piece, which is 2x minus 1 times our outside, x minus 5. So let's check it by foiling. So check by foil. So if we distribute the 2, we have 2 times 2x. It's going to give you 4x. Minus 2 times 1 is 2. And we still have x minus 5. So let's go ahead and foil. So we have our first. 4x times x is 4x squared. Outside, 4x 
times negative 5 would be negative 20x. Inside, negative 2 times x is negative 2x. And last, negative 2 times negative 5 is positive 10. So if we combine our like terms, we end up with 4x squared minus 22x plus 10. Is that what we started with? Yes, it is. So this would be your final answer. All right. So next example. We have f squared minus 81. So first step. Check for a GCF. Is there anything we can take out of f squared and negative 81? No, there is not. So is there a GCF? No. Alright, so let's multiply our a, which is f squared, times our c, which is negative 81. So although you can't see the b, yes, it's fine. So, that means our b, if there is no b, our b is 0. So, we have our a times our c. So, if we make our table and we multiply those together, we get negative 81 f squared. And let's make our table. So, we want two numbers that are going to multiply together to equal negative 81 f squared. But we want their sum to be 0, which is our b. So, 9f times negative 9f would give you negative 81f squared. You can have 1f times negative 81f. That'll give you negative 81f squared. You can have negative 1f and positive 81f. 3f and negative 27f and positive 27f and negative 3f. So there's a list that multiply together to equal negative 81f squared. But we want them to add to 0. So which one of these, if you add them together, will be 0? We add 9f plus negative 9f, that will give you 0. So. Even though there's nothing written right here, we are going to rewrite this. So we're left with f squared, and we have plus 9f, minus 9f, minus 81. Alright, so let's group them and find our GCF. So if we group f squared and 9f, our GCF of that would be f. That is the most we can take out of those two terms. Looking at our next grouping, what is the GCF of negative 9f and negative 81? Well, that would be a negative 9. So next, if we take an f out of this, we have f times if we take an f out of f squared, we're left with f plus, if we take an f out of 9f, we're left with 9. Then we have minus 9, because that is what we took out, times, if we take negative 9 out of negative 9f, we're left with f. And if we take negative 9 out of negative 81, we're left with positive 9. So we are to rewrite this. Let's look at our groupings. So we are going to have f minus 9 times what is on the inside, f plus 9. And if you were to check by foiling, you should get what you started with. Alright, so we have 
two more examples. Negative x squared plus 13x minus 40. Okay, one thing we need to make sure of. We always want to start with a positive coefficient. There is a negative out front. We do not want that. We want it to be positive. So, our first step always is GCF. If we want a positive out front, for our GCF, we can take out a negative 1 because that would make it a positive. Our GCF would be negative 1. So if we were to rewrite this, we're going to write our GCF out front times, if we take a negative 1 out of negative x squared, we're left with x squared. If we take a negative 1 out of positive 13x, we're left with negative 13x. And if we take a negative 1 out of negative 40, we're left with positive 40. There we go. That gives us a positive coefficient. So now we're going to do what we have been doing. We're going to multiply our a times our c and do our table. So our a is x squared times our c is 40. So we get 40x squared. So we want two things that are going to multiply together to be 40x squared and we want them to add to negative 13x. So, like earlier, if we want them to be multiplied together to be a positive number, we know that we can either multiply two positive numbers to get a positive and two negative numbers to get a positive. So, if we want them to add to a negative number, we know that they're both have to be negative. So, first one, we can get negative 20x and negative 2x. We can have negative 8x and negative 5x. We can have negative 4x and negative 10x. And we can get negative x and negative 40x. If we multiply all these together, straight across, we will get 40x squared. But we need to choose the two that are, we can add together to get negative 13x. Well, if we take negative 20x plus negative 2x, that's going to give you negative 22x. That is not negative 13x. If we take negative 8x plus negative 5x, that will give you negative 13x. So that is our, that is our choice. So now we are going to rewrite our negative 13x. So we're going to keep our negative 1 out in front. And we have x squared. And instead of negative 13x, we're going to write what we have. We're going to replace it with this. So we have minus 8x, minus 5x, and then we still have plus 40. All right, let's group them together and find the GCF. What is the GCF of x squared and negative 8x? What can we take out of those two? Well, we can take an x out. The GCF of negative 5x and positive 40. Well, we can take a negative 5 out. So if we were to rewrite this, we still have negative 1 out in front. If we were to take an x out, we're going to have x times, if we take an x out of x squared, we're left with x. If we take an x out of negative 8x, we're left with minus 8. And we took a negative 5 out, so we have minus 5 times we took a negative 5 out of negative 5x, we're left with x. 
and if we took a negative 5 out of positive 40, we're left with minus 8. So, again, we want the inside of these to be the same thing. If they are not, you might want to double check what you did. What you did. So now, if we rewrite this, we still have the negative 1 out in front. So we're going to group the 2 on the outside. So we have x minus 5 times the same thing that's on the inside. So x minus 8. And if you were to check by FOIL, you would see that we get what we started with. So make sure you have the same thing on the inside of these two. If you don't, go back, check your GCF, and kind of play with it a little bit until you do get the same thing on the inside. All right, our last example. We have 25x squared plus 100x. So first thing, our GCF. What is the greatest common factor that we can take out of both of these? Well, 25 and 100 we can take out of 25. And they both have an x, so we can also take out an x. So we rewrite this. We're going to have our GCF on the outside, so we have 25x. If we take 25x out of 25x squared, we're going to be left with x. Plus, if we take 25x out of 100x, we're going to be left with 4. And we got lucky. We are done. We can't factor x plus 4, which is on the inside, because there is no x squared in it. And you need the x squared inside of it to be able to factor it. So we are done. That is our answer.